Hello guys. Welcome to Boxing Blog Center, the home of Nigerian and African boxing. And please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now and also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. But I'm dropping you a banger and you will be definitely be notified. The unified of waking of the universe and also the only two time unified world and all what word Anthony Joshua has vowed to find ways to exploit all is on the O6 South Pole stands ahead of the award Everweight Championship uh, clash. Joshua is set to step down from his throne to defend to go to war again, defend his throne against a very dangerous South Pole from the Federal Republic of Ukraine. You know those guys out there. They are Slavic people. They've got the determination. They've got a big heart. They are extremely, extremely determined. Usyk is ready, willing, and wants to dethrone Anthony Joshua. But we don't know how far he can go with that. Let's, of course, hear from the king right here of the heavyweight division, Anthony. Joshua. How are you feeling now? You've got a date, a venue and an opponent. Alexander U6, September 25th at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Feels good. Feels good. Um, supposed to be fighting August 14th. That fell through. So we're back again. I've got a good management team, good promotional company that are like getting me the dates and the fight. So if one falls through, I know I'll have to defend again at some stage. So I just kind of keep my mind active. It's been a good period as well. The world slowed down. So I've had a bit of free time and stuff like that. But I've also been training ticking over which has been important and um, I've been able to work on other things and now I've got a date set fully locked in. What about these amazing surroundings you've fought in stadiums before um, you've been out across the roof of the stadium and you've touched the, the golden cockerel there as well and had a look down I asked you if you were scared of heights you sort of phased it out and said you were fine but this is a, an amazing stadium to to fight in. Unbelievable stadium like what an honour it is especially to be like defending slash fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world I don't take these things lightly. It's going to be rocking in here, you know. They just gave us like a brief history on the way the stadium was built and stuff like that. And just like the acoustics, the way they've designed it. So when the fans are in here, it just is electrifying. So that type of atmosphere and energy, it can't be denied. And that runs through my body. So 25th of September, I'm going to be here soaking it all in and uh, oozing it out in the ring. You've mentioned Usyk um, numerous times that you always thought you would fight him, perhaps not in this order. You, thought that it might be the undisputed heavyweight champion against the undisputed cruiserweight champion. It's not worked out that way, but how highly do you rate him? Rate all my opponents. I rate all my opponents. Uh, he's good. And that's all I can really say. But it's all about the final bell and whose hands are raised at the end. And that will prove who's the best. But he's good. But I need to be better. You both have that legacy of the London 2012 games as well, both gold medalists. Yeah, correct. I've done mine in a short span of time from the day I walked into the gym to get into the Olympics and winning. Like three, three years, three and a half years. He's got, uh, had a long, vast amateur career. He got a gold as well. And we've both been on the same trajectory as professionals. And it just shows that the hustlers always meet at the top, right? They say the cream always re uh, rises to the top. And that's why we're going to be competing here in this phenomenal stadium. Uh, he's a great challenger for the heavyweight titles, even though he's cruiserweight champion. But he's a great challenger for the heavyweight titles and uh, I'm looking to, to do, do a good job, handle business because I have my eyes set on other things. You just mentioned the, the final bell. It's about what the result is at the yeah. final bell and how much of it is about the result and the performance as well as that. Do you want to win this fight with a statement of performance or is it just about winning and staying on that trajectory towards Undisputed? No, all about statement performances. It's, like, it's weird because I like being normal. I like being around the shops, I like just chilling out around the local parks and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's weird because when I step into that ring, no matter how much chilling I do in my local area and mixing with people and being a nice guy and opening doors, it's all about winning. When I'm in that ring, it's all about winning. So it is about the final performances. It's about uh, training in the right fashion so I can go in there and uh, look good because that adds stock to your value, you know. Guys, you heard it from the unified everywhere king of the universe. Of course, this was when he 
conducted uh, i mean when he went when he was at the tottenham Hotspur stadium newly built stadium one of the finest finest in the entire uh planet earth okay uh joshua said he's gonna look for ways to explore exploit um music weakness as a sad ball and i mean the cool right here is on many you can't go through it all but let's go around here yeah. week i say week okay sorry uh can i chuku yes sir yes sir how you doing bro sorry i just i'm here as a week i don't know saying we cannot do it already uh, um, shout out to all our listeners happy weekend to everybody uh, I've heard what um, AJ has said, and I agree with him 100%. Um, Usyk is very, very untested um, at this week class. Yes, Usyk is a very skillful southpaw, but I see him going the same way Povetkin went. I see him getting stopped in six, seven rounds. I think he's very, very untested. Um, you need to fight the elite heavyweights before you get up to the level of an AJ or a Wilder or a Fury. Well, Joshua never said he's on. Joshua never said he's untested, though. Yeah, Joshua he says he's, 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 he's Joshua said he's a good he's a good fight he's a good fighter, but he thinks he's better, you know. And also yeah. he is going he, he he's trying to es- exploit, you know, his super weakness, you know. Yeah, so he might not say it directly, but that's what you're trying to say that you're going to figure him out and stop him because you don't believe he's been tested. I I, I think. He, I, I think he's not going to disrespect him. AJ isn't going to disrespect him. But at the same time, I think that's what he's thinking. Uh, it's the same thing. You think that um, somebody hasn't really been um, put in that kind of position. Joshua has been fighting at that upper echelon heavyweight position for almost half a decade right now in terms of, um, in terms of championship fights. Um, yes, Usyk has been fighting at that championship level for a while, but that cruiserweight is different from heavyweight. Be you orthodox or be you southpaw, uh, there's a there's a there's a difference in levels, and I think um, AJ is going to show him that level on on, on that night in the Tottenham Stadium. And remember, it's well, you know you're <laughs> you're fighting an electric crowd as well. You're going in the middle of a thirty thousand seater stadium, fully packed lights and all that it's not aj's first time doing that thing the element of the 12 man element is also going to play a strong role in that in that atmosphere i agree with aj totally um, i think we're going to see a good fight but i think by six or seven we'll be done and we'll be doing our post-fight interviews by then those are my thoughts well thanks brother i do really appreciate your take on this subject right here let's go on here ibrahim yes sir <laughs> listen well first of all um not 30k bro 60k yeah it's gonna I'm be a cold one in there no no it's so good i'm just i'm just saying that like, i agree with what you're saying it's gonna be a madness on the flip side of that, I don't think that's going to bother Usyk because um, Usyk is it's a bit of a madman. The guy's got a bit of a screw loose. Like he's, he's a, you know what I'm saying? He's not an orthodox human being. Let's just put it that way. You know what I mean? So I don't think you know something like that's going to bother him too much. But yeah, I have to agree with what AJ saying. Like AJ is even saying that respectfully because if you really wanted to go in, how the rest of us think? Let's be real. He will be saying, "This guy's not on my level." Yeah, this guy's just a is a um, is a is a is a is a, a cruiserweight coming up to the heavyweights, and he's gonna get used to the power of the big boys. But he's not saying that. He's giving him his dues, he's giving him his respect, which I think is the right thing to do because you don't want to be underestimating him. But with all due respect, AJ is thinking I'm gonna knock this guy out. Do you know what I mean? Like there's there's levels, and I'm above. You know, that's what he's thinking. I'm about to agree with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, I, like, I've been very, very disrespectful of this fight from the start, and I don't like doing that. So every time I just have to qualify that statement because I know it does come across as very disrespectful because this is a very, very well decorated guy we're talking about. But like, I just have to be honest and just speak on what I see in him. I have to think about the competition in front of me. 
and I, I just can't see any other result. Like, I just can't. So, like, yeah, like, what, what he just said it is what it is, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Like, he's basically echoing what I've been saying, what, what most people have been saying, to be honest, and just coming out the horse's mouth. Thanks, brother. I wholeheartedly appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that statement right there. Let's go, bro. On here at the Wale. <laughs> What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> oh, what is, is your mic? Eh? Like, yeah, it's, it's really, really good, man. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Yo, man. Yeah, I, 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 I had to log in on the computer so you can hear me clearer. You know, I was trying to make it a surprise too. But, man, my brothers have already spoken well, Kenechuku and Ibrahim. I just feel like I agree with what AJ said. And AJ is that kind of guy that um, he's always politically correct. He's not the kind of guy that will trash talk, say his mind the exact way he feels, unless you push him, you know. And um, some people like that about him. Others don't like it about him. Me, I fall among the category of people that don't like that about AJ. I mean, just say your mind, bro. Trash talk if you need to. You don't need to be, um, you know, looking all professional all the time. I understand you want to look professional, but this is a sport where you are risking your life, bro. You're getting punched in the head. What if your brain swells? But anyways, I feel like AJ is a way bigger guy than Usyk. I'm looking at Usyk. Money and the cars. The clothes, the house. <laughs> the house. Be, success, bro. Bro, I mean, if if you have to be successful, bro, man. Hey, bro. It, That's why he's the biggest name out there. I'm just no, no, bro. bro I, 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 Ibrahim, make make it make it really. You don't talk, yo. Make I, make I land, Ibrahim. No worry. Enjoy. No problem, man. I have no problem with my brother Joshua, man. I like AJ, so I'm not even trying to disparage him in any way. I'm just saying my mind about how I feel about him. When it comes to Usyk, I'm looking at Usyk's resume right now on Box Rec. The tallest guy that Usyk has fought is probably six three and a half. How how do you go from six three and a half to six six killer? Don't get it twisted, man. Joshua has not been looking like a killer in recent times because once he got knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko, he almost changed his fighting style. He became that guy that was more careful in engaging. We saw that happen in the um, Carlos Takam fight, Joseph Parker fight. And then he came back, he became a killer against Povetkin, but Povetkin was already washed up, you know. And then Joshua got knocked out by Andrew Ruiz, came back, outboxed Andrew Ruiz, after that, knocked out Skrubak Pulev. I'm not too sure if Joshua is the killer that he once was, but he's still a killer to an extent. But with that being said, I just feel like even that little killer aspect of Joshua is enough to hurt Usyk badly. Usyk is like six foot three. He's going in there against a six foot six guy. The only tall guy that Usyk fought in the past, um, Joe Joyce, six foot six. That was a long time ago. These two guys were like, amateurs and that fight he was able to win because joyce was much slower than Usyk. joshua is fast bro right now joshua is more experienced he took that loss that loss made him a better fighter i feel like joshua is going to watch this guy man people are giving Usyk too much chances man i'm not trying to dis disrespect Usyk. i don't think Usyk poses as much of a threat to joshua as um kubra pulev did and that's what I just feel so. Because Usyk will be dancing around. He will be running around. His game plan will be to outpoint Joshua. But you can't even do that, man. Joshua knows how to box too. Bro, Usyk is going to get knocked out. Mm. Thanks, brother. I do appreciate it. Um, Let's get our brother on here, Isioma. Oh, well, I just joined the conversation and... Uh, I do not know the trajectory of the of the conversation. Uh, a, uh, um, well, let me let me break it down for you, Joshua, uh, the unified everywhere king of the universe. You know, talked about Olesna Usik saying that he vowed 
to find ways to exploit Usyk's uh, sad post tense. Okay, exploit his weakness. And he said, I quote here, yeah, when I step into that ring, no matter how much of a nice guy I am, it's about winning. Okay. Um, it's about defining performances and training in the right fashion so I look good, which has stuck to my value. When you fight good opponents, people respect it. They have to give you credit. This is about being a throwback fighter and taking on all challenges. It's about statement performances. Um, Joshua talked about how he will beat uh, Usyk. Um, you know, even though Usyk is a, is a dangerous southpaw, a slicky southpaw, he said, understanding ang angles, where you are, when you finish punching, where shots are coming from. Everything is in reverse with a southpaw. That's a technical element that that's a technical element then you have the spiritual element i am a fighting person i pray and meditate and visualize i train my mind that will get me a long way as well means of the technical ability and the god-given talent even though i'm fighting a southpaw i should be able to find ways and see gaps to explode each of my opponents a lot of things said here as well, but uh, let's just get to that. Uh, let's just get to that. Let's see more. Well, you know, Anton Joshua for who he is, um, he never gets to disrespect his opponents, doesn't trash talk them, doesn't talk down on them, doesn't disregard um, their ability. Even when he does know that he's he has what it takes, you know, to talk over and above them. He still gives them their due respect because let's face facts here. For any man to walk into the ring, um, that man has got some heart, he's got some balls, and he should be saluted for just stepping into the ring. All right. Let alone when such a fellow has got an enviable fight record and history. I do believe that Anton Joshua would um, dominate and take the victory over Yusek, but you don't want to go sleep on a man like Yusek. And in boxing, particularly in the heavyweight division, anything can happen. A lack of concentration for a nanosecond can call it good night for the favorite, okay, for the one who has the odds to win. Anton Joshua has proven his mettle, but it has also been proven on Anton Joshua that he is beatable by even the least expected. If Joshua was not disregarding his opponents before he had that loss, why would he disregard anyone now that he's even had the loss? Okay, much less for a man like Yusuf, who is yet to record a loss in his professional career, is even though we could argue that oh, that was in in um, cruiserweight division, but history has shown us that someone can come from cruiserweight and even take the heavyweight by storm conquer it and dominated. A typical example was Evander Holyfield. Okay. Evander Holyfield was a typical example. So this is Anthony Joshua giving due regard, due respect to the person who is fighting for his belt. Um, it does not mean that he does not believe he will not have the better of him. But I fancy that you even do not trash talk, go in, do the business, then you trash talk, and when you're decimated, the world begins to laugh at you. We saw how um, um, Dante Wilder was ridiculed, was laughed at, was made a mess of, because Dante would not keep his mouth shut. I'm not saying that fighters should keep their mouth shut. As a matter of fact, the trash talk is part of the excitement in, in, in the sports anyway. Okay, we enjoyed it when Tyson, Mike Tyson did it. We enjoyed it when Muhammad Ali introduced it to, to boxing. We, it's, it builds the excitement. 
eight well sought the anticipation okay but we should also not call a fighter who has refused to travel that lane fake i've had a couple of persons fighters now dylan white chief amongst them and a lot of fans describe Anthony joshua as fake because he would not trash talk nobody calls um was this new zealander fighter again joe parker okay no one calls joseph parker yeah no one calls him a fake for not trash talking why does it always have to be Anthony Joshua? Because the dude is successful, he's envied, everyone wishes they were like him. So when he doesn't play their card, they, they, they tag him and label him names. So I am very, very um, comfortable with the position that Anthony Joshua has assumed. And this is not just him wanting to sound like a nice guy. I do believe that the Jude really is a nice guy. I do not know anyone ever, maybe just a few names can be mentioned, but I really do not know anyone in the mode of Anthony Joshua who took a loss and was magnificently graceful in the loss. All right. We saw how he went over to Andrew Ruiz, put his left arm across Ruiz's shoulder and joined him in the post-fight ringside interview okay lifted his hand up truly truly applauded his victory no excuses till date not even one excuse the only thing he's ever said is well that was not me in the ring okay but he never took the props away from andy Ruiz. so I, I like that he's taking that position um but we do know that we're going to be saying Saul will be smoking hot. Maybe Joshua has lost the fiery power he had before the Andy Ruiz fight. Maybe. Uh, but I do not want to discredit Povetkin at all. Povetkin might have been old, but some persons are like fine wine. They even fight better as they grow older. Povetkin is one of them. Um, don't forget George Foreman fought Evander Holyfield in his 40s, I guess. And you saw how tough it was for Evander to put George Foreman down. So some persons really get to box even stronger as they grow older. Mm. Thanks, brother. Yeah, Thanks, brother. I do agree with that. Sorry, man. Sorry, go on. I do appreciate your take on this yeah ibrahim you want to say something quick before we you know yeah 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 that's what i was gonna say because i don't want to, i wasn't even this because what i don't want to say is actually true i was just making a point of like yeah but this is why he's doing it but yeah some people don't like that about aj and some people like me too in it you know i'm saying like but some people you know I mean? something like I, I also get it because i also like trust you know i'm saying like i said tyson fury like i like some of his trust talk, you know what i'm saying but when he just chat shit, that's when it gets annoying but I love trash talking boxing, but at the same time, I can appreciate a man that when he needs to chat, it's not like AJ is like me. It's not me. Do you know what I'm saying? When someone pushes him, he pushes back. Do you know what I'm saying? But there's also no need to trash talk to be successful. Like Tisco proved that as well. Do you know what I mean? There's different ways to skin a cat. And that's why AJ is so marketable and so brandable because of his his image. And he has to protect that. Like, why not? But also, like, in some I don't think that's being fake at all. I think like that's genuinely that the type of guy he is in it. He's very cerebral. So I'm saying he stinks. He's, he's made it very clear that he wants to become a billionaire. So he values the business side of things very much as much as he values the boxing side of things. So like, why would he not just be himself? Because for him to start being a trash talker, that would be him putting on a persona because that's not him. So I'm saying, so he's being himself. That's what I truly feel it is. And look, at the end of the day, right now, we can say it's working for him. So like, why? Why change if you are broke? But the provoking comment, like I just found that disrespectful. Like at the time that AJ for provoking, like provoking was very, very dangerous. Provoking proved he was fucking dangerous last year. Do you know what I mean? Like provoking was a very, very dangerous live wire when AJ fought him. It wasn't like some easy fight for AJ. Yeah? We forget like AJ, AJ was bleeding from the nose. Do you know what I'm saying? It took AJ a couple of rounds to figure provoking out. So that wasn't no like easy fight for him. Johnson and back then, Povetkin was still live. 
Let's not forget, he only ever lost once before he fought AJ. And even after he fought AJ, all the other fights he's had, he's only ever just lost again to, to, to Dillian for the second time. The guy's had three professional losses. This is a world-class fight. And we're talking, what, four years ago? AJ fought him four or five years ago? Come on, this guy was still live. He was definitely still live right for sure. But, um, but yeah, man, I agree with everything that everyone said. I think, I think we're all in unison, realistically, in terms of AJ has been humble, but which I like because he needs to he needs to be that way. He needs to really think, you know what, this guy poses a threat, but he also needs to be confident that he's gonna overcome that threat. But obviously, us, like we don't have to train, we don't have to get into a mindset. We just have to see it for what it is like. Listen, bro, from what we can see, you know what I'm saying? This guy's gonna get dispatched. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, guys. You heard it from our brothers in the house. And stay tuned for my Zuzu Banger right here. As usual, we give you guys nothing but extraordinary bangers. Stay tuned.